Mike, um, your players have talked about your even demeanor in your meetings, practices. Uh, why do you think having that coaching style is important, and how much of that is just a reflection of your personality and in what ways? I think I think what's important is just being yourself, um, coaching, playing. I think that's you know important to show your personality, and you know I think you gotta you know be you whenever you're trying to give a message and be as positive and, and go through that process. I mean, uh, being even, how do you think it helps these guys? Uh, you know, sure, get through it. I mean, football's football could be chaotic at times, so I think it's um, it's important to kind of keep your composure, um, understand where you're at in a given situation, and you know, find a way and be able to problem solve. For me, um, being that in that demeanor allows me to problem solve and think clearly and, and give the guys the right information. Mike, why did you decide not to take any interviews this week and do you plan to take them next week regardless? Um, touched on that a little bit last week. You know, I think we'll find the appropriate time that's best for myself and the team. But uh, I know Dave's hit on that this week about not doing them this week during the game week. So try to keep that as normal as possible. And then we'll, you know, we'll communicate and, and find a good time when that's right. Have you ever, to keep you back off there earlier, have you, have you ever been angry? Have you, have you ever lost your emotions? And yeah, I mean, I'd, absolutely. I mean, there's, there's times and places where that happens, but you know, you try and stay within it, if, you know, figure out what went wrong, figure out how you can fix it. And then that's really all the players want is, is an answer. So, um, you know, just get back into uh, a mentality where you can help find answers for them. Does being away from the sideline help that on Sundays or Saturdays or whatever you play? Yeah, um, as far as being in the booth, you're saying? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, like being, being in the booth is, was definitely different. I'd spent a, the last several years on the field. Um, not good or like, I think they're just different experiences. Down in the field, you get a little bit more um, of a feel of the players being right next to them and being able to communicate it. Um, when you're up in the booth, you get a bigger picture, kind of a bird's eye view of the field. So it's it, they're different, and so you got to have trust both ways, on uh, whether you're on the field, trust upstairs in the booth, and when you're on the booth, trust downstairs on the field to get the right information. I guess what I'm asking though is, does it help you to sort of disassociate yourself from the emotion and the passion and yeah, everything going on? Definitely, definitely. You can you can definitely think a little bit. Um, you can you have op more time to think and to kind of spread out and have some you know you have, a, have an area there to write some notes down and. Um, where you don't really have that on the field, you know, desk and all that. So, and it's definitely quieter, so you don't have to worry about the crowd noise in between drives and stuff. That that's part of the two major differences. Mike, is, there, is, is there any, um, you know, this, when you're up there, the communication is the only thing that matters, right? right? You know, they can't. So, have there been either issues or is it something you have to train yourself? You know, because you got a lot of people mm -hmm. in your ear also, and you got to be clear, you got to not mumble, you know, that kind of stuff. I mean, it sounds yeah. maybe not important, but it's crucial, isn't it? Yeah, those are, and those are things that you really practice, like in, in training camp and OTAs, just the denunciation of the plays and working through how I'm going to communicate, you know, this number or this set of plays and how the quarterback wants to hear it, because that's really all that matters, you know, if I'm talking to the quarterback, that he gets the information quickly, concise, he can hear it, and that way he can relay that information. Daniel, a good listener? Daniel does a great job with the headset and communicating to the huddle, communicating what we want, what we want to get, get wrong with on offense. Mike, what is? We've talked to you since the game, obviously. What did you think of Daniel's performance in his first playoff? Yeah, Daniel, Daniel did a nice job. Obviously, did um, had some really good production with his legs, good production with his arm. He, I mean, he made good decisions from the from the quarterback position and eliminating those turnovers, which is which is big in really any game. Um, in playoffs, those type of things get elevated. So um, I thought he did a nice job. You know, he directed the offense and, you know, he did all the things that we asked him to do for quarterback position. On game days, how do you see his demeanor change, if at all, from like the Slayton drop versus the Hodgins pretty remarkable patch? Right. I mean, yeah, you guys see it on, on, the, um, on, the, on the TV and, you know, even when you guys are on the field, he's pretty much the same guy every day. And, um, you know, he doesn't really sweat it either way or, you know, up or down. He kind of just stays in the game and, and keeps fighting, keep playing, and I think that's where, you know, you see a guy like him, you know, he's put us in position to be in those type of games. Mike, what do you think has made the Eagles so successful at rushing the quarterback? I think the first thing starts, you know, they're really talented players. Um, they have a really talented group. Their 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 depth, super talented. It's not just like the front four. They got backups, guys that are perennial all pros and pro bowlers. Um, they're well coached, right? They have a good scheme. And they're sound with their scheme, and um, they do a lot of good stuff on defense. So we gotta, you know, we gotta have a good week of prep. 
Mike, the first half of the year is really like the identity of the team was running through Saquon, really run heavy, and it seemed like it's shifted. What has enabled you guys to put more trust in the passing and put more on Daniel's plate in that regard? I think, you know, each week you just go through that process and evaluate how the scheme is looking, what we're seeing on defense, you know, how we can put our players in the best spot um, to be successful and, and execute, you know, and as the, as the games go longer each season, um, and as you get deeper and deeper into the season, you know, those things just get magnified. So we have to focus on, you know, our fundamentals and our techniques. All those things are super important. My of course. Daniel Bell Bellinger coming this year, and how much did he have to reset after the VBI injury? Yeah, but Belly keeps growing every single week. You, you see improvement in the little things that we talk about with him. Um, in the run game, he's showing up. He's showing up in the pass game. Um, and he's one of those guys that's just, um, you know, really good. Um, he's, a, he's, a, he's a great teammate. You know, he does a lot of good, like, just the little things with Bellinger, you're seeing him really improve on. Did he have to reset after the eye injury, and do you feel like he's gotten back to where he was? Yeah, early? I mean, I've never had an injury like that, well, um, you know, with the vision and trying to catch football and stuff. So I don't want to speak for him on it, but, you know, it, it was good to have him back. And he had great energy. He was in all the meetings, and he was – and he was still around, so it didn't really feel like um, he lost anything. You know, he kind of jumped right back into the flow of it and uh, was right back where he left off. Mike, when they, the circumstances are what they mm -hmm. are two weeks ago when yeah. you close out the regular season against them, uh, I'm sure there are things you could gain schematically on how you put together the game plan. Um, can you look at the personnel and think, all right, we had these guys out there, but when we reinsert our guys, maybe this works differently or the – Game plan is even more enhanced because of what you're bringing now off the sideline. Yeah, when you when you watch the tape, you know we, we look at all the all the mat matchups, all the personnel, all the formations, see how they want to align to, it and see if we can find just a little bit of an edge to to gain an advantage for the offense. You know whether it was a motion, a formation, a shift, the personnel grouping, changing it out of those with the run and the pass. You know trying to tie all that stuff together. It's that's an extensive process that we go through each week. How long have you been waiting to uh, unveil the Statue of Liberty? Oh, um, that that was a good one. That was just the week. That was the weekly ad for that game. Um, it worked out. It worked out nice. I mean, we only got a few yards on it, but it looked sweet. <laughs> did, did you? I mean, it, it was handled correctly, right? Yeah, I mean, Daniel, Daniel and uh, Brita did a nice job with the ball handling. They worked on it. You know, you guys left, and that's when we started. You know, pulling it out. <laughs> is is um, is that hard for a quarterback? I mean, you played the position. Did, were you able to do that? You know, smooth? I mean. Yeah, I think the the creativity that the staff has bringing that to them, and the players love that kind of stuff. So, um, you know, you know, giving it giving it to those guys and letting them kind of run with it. Um, I, I don't know the level of difficulty. I think Daniel handled it great on that particular one, but uh, you know, th those are those are those are neat plays. You wish you would have got a little bit more. Is, it, is that a is, is that a Chiefs thing, or is that did somebody else bring that? In? No, that's a it's a Giants thing. You know, those are things that you know we're building for our for our offense um, and want to you know continue to build on. Is that something, Mike? Is that something you work on during the course of the season, or you just broke out last week? Yeah, it was it was a play that we had kind of talked about, but then you know there was an opportunity for it versus the look, and you know, there was a few things that had to happen, um, you know, right for the play to work, and um, you know it, it was the right situation. I thought just 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 a tick off, but yeah, we just pulled it off for that game. Mike, can you, Isaiah Hodgins' development, obviously. Dave's and Shane knew him. I'm sure you were less familiar with him, but the way he's come on as rapidly as he has, but I think yeah. it's five touchdowns in six yeah, games. Yeah, I mean, from the day, not known, not having much experience with him before that, I mean, he's been nothing but impressive coming in, studying the playbook, working his butt off. Um, he's a great teammate. I mean, he does, all, he does all the right things. He's a pro. So, you know, he's, he's one of those guys that, you know, jumped into that room and, and was able to add, was able to add uh, some value.